A new study shows that there is a growing number of people who are having dating app burnout, David. People are tired of it. Yeah, the title of this viral New York Times article is a decade of fruitless searching, the toll of dating app burnout. Wow. 10 years after the launch of Tinder, some long-term online daters say endless swiping has been bad for their mental health. And of course, wow. Andrew, there's a huge long article. There's thousands and thousands of comments. They're mostly focusing on uh, two women, but one of them is named Abby Andrew. She's uh, been on dating apps for eight years between OkCupid, Bumble, Tinder, eHarmony, Match, Woo Plus, Coffee Meets Bagel, Hinge. And basically she said, I have not had a single long-term relationship that has blossomed from my efforts whoa so is it her fault or the dating apps fault let's talk about it guys there's some interesting t statistics here and a lot of comments obviously we'll also tie in our own personal experience so please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the hot pop boys and also check out small Lost sauce bring it on your next dating app date well, the good thing is the bullet style bottle allows you to bring it to the restaurant where you guys are probably meeting. Obviously, it yeah. depends. You like coffee dates. Hey. You like dinner dates. You like drinks dates. Great for dates. Hey, you want to try this new sauce? It's hot. It's spicy. Just uh like me. Um, quick thoughts, man. It's interesting because you never hear anybody talk about how much they love using dating apps. Uh, maybe unless you are a girl that's a model or a guy that's a celebrity, I could see that being a little bit of a different situation. Nobody ever talks about how much they like it, but it seems like, is there any other way to meet nowadays? It seems like seven out of 10 people meet on apps. Yeah, my overall personal opinion, and we're going to get into the stats of the article though, I think apps, dating apps are a necessary evil. They are sometimes unpleasant, but they really do open up the market and they really do allow you to meet a lot of people that you're not meeting in your daily life, period. Okay, let's be honest. Now, with that said, I do know people who got married off the dating apps, but I will say this with the caveat that they got married because they had a strong idea of what they were looking and what for. app was it because some of that people do people get married off tinder or are people getting married and let's be honest off like e-harmony or coffee meets bagel right it was coffee meets bagel and hinge so i think uh not so much tinder yet uh but maybe somebody got married off tinder you know somebody has been married off tinder let's be honest but yeah anyways more I, people have been cheated on through tinder right tinder has ruined more marriages than it has created yeah um, I guess what I'm saying is uh, the best marriages that I do know or the best relationships that I've personally been in were developed not on the apps, though, for myself. Like okay. the longest relationships Fair. I have had over the past 10 years met even at a club. Even meeting at a club is different than meeting on the apps. Sure, sure, Because sure, that's sure. a physical place. That's a old school analog way of yeah. meeting. Some people met at the club. In the 1950s, the what Copacabana, they, back in the day. What they call it is a shared space. It is a shared space. But I guess, what is your personal experience? Like, so I'm uh, saying that, I'm not saying that it hasn't worked, because obviously, statistically, it has to work. But I'm just saying that it seems like meeting at, at some sort of like shared interest group might, might be better. I think that a lot of people go into using the dating apps with no idea of what they're looking for and hoping they're like, what? I matched with all these people. Well, one of them's got to fall in love with me and I got to fall in love with them. I'm like, no, I think it's still a very, very intentional thing. You know, the longest relationship I've been in was off the app. And I don't think that's like, weird or crazy to say, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I think I've also met people outside of the app as well. So I guess what I'm saying is my suggestion is if you're going to keep using the apps, I know it's tiring. I know there's burnout. I've been burned out in my life, but you got to have a clear idea of what you're looking for so that you can find it and vet people that way. Right. And that's why you see people try to be very detailed in their profile sometimes, right? right? It really depends. Um, I would say, you know, what's really interesting. Do you think the problem with the apps is that it's matching people that don't have shared interests and they just like how each other looks. So inevitably it's going to break apart versus meeting each other at the pre-selected place where you already have shared interests. Exactly. Cause, I mean, cause you're bringing people from like disparate interest groups that will never mix or tribes that don't necessarily vibe. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, there's so many different ways to get married, I think, and have a long relationship. But I think ultimately the most important thing to me is communication of what you actually want. Because that's the thing. It's when you match with each other yeah. and you think it's going to work, but you don't verbally tell them what you're looking for. And then you find out that you two are not on the same page. Right, right, right. And you could even be two puzzle pieces that do fit. But one of the puzzle pieces is like has got a time lock on their yes. puzzle piece matching that's like, no. Nope. 
It's need three more years of playing around before the puzzle piece is open. So now it's like, you're like, and the other person's freaking out because their timeline's ready to match with the other puzzle piece. And they're like, ah, oh, I finally found a match. I've been searching for 10 years on these apps. And the other person's like, well, I got a time lock on there. And it's not breaking. Right, right, right. So yeah. anyway, let's get into the comment section. Somebody said, so you're saying that trying to find your forever person on an app that requires you to swipe left or right based on physical attractiveness is a bad life strategy. Good to know. I didn't see that coming. I'm shocked. Is that, is that a interesting way to put it or? Uh, I mean, I, again, man, I think the dating apps, I always stand by the fact that I think it is useful, but with caveats and you gotta be using it right. This person said, habitually single men are the ones who refuse to settle down. And habitually single women are the ones who refuse to settle, period. Dating apps exist specifically to introduce these two categories of people to one another. So that's not going to work that well because the dudes don't want to settle down and the women don't want to settle. Obviously, they're referring to hypergamy yeah. or et cetera, et cetera. Or it's, I guess, dating up, right? Right. Um, somebody said, uh, you know what the real problem is nowadays? It's not about that. It's not about gender roles or like guys, you know, being man childs. It's just about everybody gamifying the whole experience. Mm. Everybody thinks it's so fun to meet new people. They love the magic, the dopamine release of that first date. And guess what? It's just simple marginal value. The more you go out with somebody, the more you get to know them, the more that extra first date spark goes away and you're just addicted to first sparks. Yeah, yeah, that is true. I do think that it is is so exciting to meet someone for the first second third time and you have the sparks flying that is very exciting let's be honest but that is not like at the end of the day to have like a long-term relationship you have to like have that long-term mindset if you don't have the mindset and they don't have the mindset it's probably not going to work you're saying if both people love eating delicious foods from different cultures for the first time but they want to just do that every day because you know how it's so exciting to like try a new dish. You're like, oh, I haven't yeah. had this dish before. Yeah, exactly. You, but if you're just so addicted to that feeling. Yeah. Exactly. If you're addicted to that dopamine feeling of the first date in the chase, that is eventually going to fall back on you. It's your fault. It's not the dating app's fault. The dating app is there to just put two people in front of each other and you guys decide what happens. That is literally what it's there for. So if you are losing out at that game, it's because you don't have the emotional training or the emotional fortitude or the direction in your life to figure out what you want. Somebody said, maybe it's not the apps. Maybe it's just us as humans. And it was always this crappy yes. burnout before yes. the apps existed and nothing's changed, but just like the format of how this crappiness Guys, is taking place is, is more frequent. Dating burnout happened, whether it was people at your church fixing you guys up together, whether it was parents trying to introduce you. What was it before dating apps, David? It was your parents saying, hey, you should meet uh, Sandra. Oh, no, I used to, I know that friends used to be way more proactive about yeah. setting up their friends because you kind of had but, to. But, but, or but, you had to go to nightclubs nonstop. There was da oh, you want to talk about burnout? Oh, go to the nightclub and try to approach a bunch of women. Then you'll really burn out that night. Bro, I just approached eight different girls, man. I'm so tired, man. I'm done for the night. I want to get drunk and then go eat a burrito and I'm knocking out and then I'm, you know, going to squeeze one out. I'm just saying there's burnout from that. And then there's burnout from being introduced to a bunch of people through your friends and family because they didn't work. So I'm saying uh, dating burnout so, always existed. Okay, okay, I agree with you, but it I do agree, I, I don't fully agree with you because I actually agree with this follow-up comment because they got into an argument. Somebody said, no, it's society has become increasingly superficial. It's all about being conventionally attractive and it, that has changed over society because everybody has a perfectionist mindset because there are seemingly endless opportunities in 2023. It's not just with dating, it's with buying any product. Yes. People used to just go down to the local dealership and pick up a car. Nowadays, people are like flying across the country to get a good deal on a whip and drive okay. it all the way back. That I agree, I agree, that is true, listen. I Society's think he's changed. Both things can be true. That dating burnout has always existed before the apps and that society did change. I think those two factors are true. They can both be true. Now, percentage-wise, is it 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30? I don't know, but I'm just saying both things are true. Yeah, I think society changed, which changed like the probability outcomes, but then online dating also increased the frequency that everybody's dating. Do you see what I'm saying? So that it's like one is the, the apps increase the frequency, but the search for perfection or endless opportunities 
But but this is more the outcome. But to me, this is the same argument as anything in this world, like sports. Oh, sports is better. People are more athletic now because they have all the great nutrition and training from a young age. Oh, and then people are mad. Oh, it's so competitive in sports now. But I'm like, everybody has access to the same training to a certain right. extent. So, so it's interesting, Andrew. One was just uh, blaming the human experience. Another was dating how society, blaming how society's changed. But this third commenter was blaming the apps, saying the apps have a vested interest in creating this like hamster wheel of everybody to create more profitability. So this is a little bit, I don't know if this is like getting into Dude. conspiracy theory nah, territory, nah, nah, nah. but I, 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 I know. Hey, that would make the hell of a plot of a movie though, right? If the apps all were like trying to like change dating dynamics to the point to just create profitability, but it like ruins society to do the family dynamics. Dude. The dating apps did not change society. They are a symptom of the changing society. Before dating apps, it was the dating website. Before dating websites, it was you getting introduced by your friends or you meeting people at the club that you thought were good but, looking. But, but maybe people at the same club or the people that are meeting through friends, there's a higher likelihood of matching. That's what people are saying because it's not looks based. Yeah, but that's also because society was different. Yeah. I mean, so hey, guys, we got, we got a lot more so TV. We got a... Did society change first or did the dating apps come up? You guys tell me. Well, people are eating a lot of new types of foods nowadays and watching all different types of programs on the internet too. So oh, man. anyway, man. I, I'm rolling on self-responsibility on this one, guys. This you person says, my out. daughter went to Harvard. She makes big money and she still can't find anyone good. She's attractive too. And then somebody said, uh, man, nobody cares about your daughter's academic achievements. Of course, this turned into a gigantic argument, you know, because obviously... Dude, some people do, some people don't, right? And then some people are just saying, you know, it's all about hypergamy where a lot of people nowadays, you know, uh, like nobody's religious anymore. So nobody's thinking about, you know, raising that PTA yes. life. Yes, so nobody like it. wants to live a traditional life, which is also leading to it. It's just the desire to not get married. And the people are using the apps to have a series of hookups to delay that feeling of like not wanting to be a boring married person. Mm -hmm. So basically it just cycled into this gigantic thing. But obviously some people were blaming the men, Andrew, saying that in 2023, all men are being man children for as long as they can because they are enjoying it. Right, Leonardo DiCaprio. He is yeah, a man child. Yeah, right? listen, maybe, maybe, hey, maybe it's the man's fault 60%, you know, because women, their role, you know, they've always, they're always going to be the ones giving birth. So they, they, you can say they have a certain clock or time or whatever. But then, guys, is it that the guys, we're messing up because we want to play around longer? It's Leo. So you're saying it was so Leo, Leo DiCaprio. Is it the he Leo? He was the. The, it did Leo ruin things or did the app Le ruin Leo things? Leo and Nick Cannon. Uh, somebody said it's because of hypergamy because women are always trying to date up when they're already high up. That's why your daughter who went to Harvard can't find anybody. She probably wants a six-foot Harvard grad who got better grades than her, earns more than her, is of the same ethnicity or a globally higher-ranked ethnicity, and that's just way too hard for her to find. You know what, guys, man? Uh, what, what's the last comment? Somebody said people used to actually go outside and join groups. And nobody does that anymore. Huh? Yeah, what happened true. to joining no, groups? You, you need to go join groups. You need to go have meetups and meet people in person. It's true. 100%. And I guess the last comments were all surrounding basically hookups saying that this allows you to get the physical side of a relationship without the emotional mm -hmm. uh, time investment of a relationship. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Somebody said, you know, due to the apps nowadays, there are so many people with such a large number of sexual partners that they are no longer able to pair bond. This is a biological thing, and this will lead to a much larger demographic collapse. So, the, the, Andrew, and then probably, you know, they didn't say this, but I'm, get, I'm assuming that's when AI steps in. is like, Dude. humans are no Dude. longer recreating. Guys. It's time for me to dominate. Let me, let me tell you something, man. Whatever you guys want to blame it on, the new generation, technology, contraceptives, you want to blame it on the party culture. You want to blame it on the chase of dopamine. You want to blame it on the dating apps. The fact is people are still getting married nowadays, whether on or off the app. So if you know friends who are not necessarily two beautiful people or two ugly people getting together, there's all different types of matches going on. People are still getting married and having kids and having families. So I'm saying if you talk to your married friends who are young and have dated around, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, man... Love, pairings, marriage, it's a choice. You both have to make that decision and commit to each other. That, it is not going to just happen because you magically just... I, I, I sure hope that Taylor Swift and uh, Travis Kelce work out. Yeah, well, don't because, focus on the celebrities, man. 
It is true. Everybody wants to taste everything. Everybody wants to experience everything. It is what it is. But at the end of the day, if you know what you want, then you go seek out what you want. You know what I mean? Because people are still getting married. People act like nobody's getting married nowadays. Yeah. I do think that there's more room for more apps to be developed in the future that are better at matching people for marriage. Yes. And I think that Hinge as a middle of the road app that like is like as a catch all. I don't know. I think it'll have its moment and it's probably in its moment right now, but it's hard to believe that it won't niche back out into, you know, its specific silos. Yeah, yeah, for sure. E-harmony, things like, uh, I mean, I heard of some people there and how many dating apps right now that are, are in ghost mode are developing right now yeah, that are sure. based off like a trillion for things. sure. There's a lot of different niches, the league, Raya. Oh, we meet other exclusive celebrities and like influencers. Oh, meet only people who are high earners, whatever it is, man. Yeah. It's, there's a bunch of dating apps out there. I think it's on you to understand what the app is and understand what you want. If you're trying to play around, you get on the apps. If you're trying to look for a long-term partner, then you that's what you look for. You mm-hmm. have to you have to know what you're looking for. Number one key. That's my opinion. Hey, listen, guys. Thousands and thousands and thousands of opinions, comments, ones that you know disagree, listen, agree with each other. If you don't know what you're looking for, you're always going to be lost. Let us know what you think in the comment section below, guys. Very hot topic. A lot of people, married, unmarried, got a lot of opinions on it. Go to smileasshouse.com. Until next time. Hot topic, but also a nicely hot chili oil. Check it out. Smileasshouse.com.